Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the excavation of Hobbs Barrow. Um, <laughs> things took an interesting turn last time out, didn't they? Some big plot twists. And now, I think we're probably going to go back to the farm and see if we can actually speak to Bryden about this third person who was on the original excavation. Um, also, Paul Leone says at this point the game is going to get pretty crazy, which I'm really looking forward to. Oh, it's that kid. Hello. Uh... I mean, that's the way we want to go, but should we follow? Take a bit of a detour? Oh. Excuse me, sir. Here's the bench. Yes? Did you see a young girl with blonde hair pass by here? No, lass. There you are. Are you Thomasina Beckman? Mm hmm. Is this Leonard's shoulder? Uh, yeah, tell the truth. That's my name. How marvellous! It's me, Leonard Shaw. It is! Heavens! I'd given up on finding you. Finally found him. Please take a seat, Miss Bateman. We have much to discuss. We do. Okay, nice. I'm glad we followed now. You've proven to be quite the enigma, Mr. Shoulder. I'm mortified. I offer you a thousand apologies. You see, I've been bound to me bed these past few days with a terrible fever. Huh. How dreadful. I take it you're feeling better now? Aye. I were on me way to find you when I stopped here to catch me breath. I've not much go in me these days. I'm sorry to hear that. I were worried you'd have given up on me and left town. I had no idea what had become of you, Mr. Shoulder. I spent a good amount of time pounding on your front door. I'm embarrassed. I really am. I've been doing me best to sleep through the fever. I am so very sorry. Hmm. Please accept my apology, Miss Bateman. Fine, I mean, Mr. Shoulder. Yeah. I've come all this way. Let us speak of the business at hand. Marvelous. I've just learned that my father was part of a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow some 25 years ago. Why didn't you mention this in your letter? What? Where did you hear that? I have my means. I swear, Miss Bateman, I had no idea. So he didn't hmm. know. I take it you will also deny delivering me my father's journal? I'm confused. What journal? My father's journal was slipped under my door at the Plough and Furrow. It wasn't you who did this. I've been bound to me bed, lass. Hmm. What an extraordinary coincidence. You are following in your father's footsteps. It would seem so, Mr. Shoulder. Alright, well we've got a lot to talk about. It's also, sickness seems to be a thing. Like, we saw Father Roach with some sort of weird sickness thing. Then this guy says he's been sick. Arthur Tillett was in some sort of like weird trancey sickness thing. Let's ask about the letters. Why did you invite me to excavate Hobbs Barrow? I've always been curious about the colourful folklore surrounding the place. My father told me all sorts of stories about it when I was a wee fellow. Stories that some folk around here take a little too seriously. Especially after those lads entered the barrow a while back. Right. So that's a slightly different take then from everyone else. How did you know about me? I saw your interview in the Bakewell Times. A young lady travelling about the land, digging up barrows. Perfect for the job. Okay. But why do you wish to excavate the barrow? I want to see what those lads found in there. My curiosity has grown over the years. Now it is time for the mystery to be solved. I must say, I am rather eager to find out what's in there myself. Okay, let's ask about Hobbs Barrow then. I've managed to find Hobbs Barrow, but Mr. Bryden is yet to give me permission to excavate. Is that so? It is. Keep trying. You'll relent eventually. Perhaps you could have a word with him. Oh no. A lovely young lass such as yourself has a better chance of changing his mind than a shaky old goat like me. <laughs> hmm. You told me in your letter there would be no issue gaining access to the barrow. I didn't foresee any when I wrote to you. I'm sorry this has been more complicated than anticipated. Don't give up yet, Miss Bateman. Keep trying with Mr. Bryden. Alright, we can do that. Let's ask about our father then. Did you know my father? I don't believe so. What's his name? William. William Bateman. He was in Beaulieu for at least a few days, from my understanding. I'm sorry, lass. The name doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. 
Are you sure you had no idea of my father's involvement in the previous excavation? I'm quite sure. The most fascinating coincidence, but nothing more than that. I'm starting to wonder if it's more than mere coincidence, Mr. Shoulder. Miss mm. Bateman, I did not take you for a credulous individual. I'm not of the sort. So here's the thing, right? He's not trustworthy, is he? Because we saw him in town on that first night. When we went through the alley, we saw him going back through the moors. So he hasn't been in his bed for five days or whatever he said. So can we believe him? I'm not sure we can. What can you tell me about the previous excavation of Hobbs Valley? Unless he was in a trance. Oh, it was 25 years ago, or thereabout. Back then, Bewley were undergoing a period of great strife. Samuel Bryden hadn't harvested a single crop for two seasons. Oh. Even Hernwood was sick. Berries went to rot almost as quickly as they grew. Folks started to believe the ground were blighted. Disease spread through the livestock too. People were going hungry, a panic set in. That sounds terrible. Aye, but I managed to keep myself fed. These things happen in nature, but the blame for it all fell on Hobbs Barrow. It was long said that a goblin made his own way. A rumor took root that the goblin were not best pleased with the villagers. In revenge for some unperceived slight, the goblin placed a curse on the soil itself. The villagers believed that ridding the barrow of its lodger would put an end to it all. Right. Hogwash. My father would have paid no heed to such tales. Whether it were his intent to join the excavation when coming here, I do not know. But whatever it were that Samuel Bryden and those lads did inside that barrel, people say it did the trick. The crop started to grow back, and health returned to the livestock. Yuli were mm. no longer in the grip of dark forces. Hmm. You must understand, folk here are a superstitious lot. They don't want you disturbing whatever it were those lads did. As far as the villagers are concerned, the problem were fixed. The thought of another excavation must be conjuring panic that you'll undo whatever it were they did. This does explain a lot. It does. And it's also why I'd venture nobody around here wants you to touch the play. Yeah. Except for you. I want to know what's there. Surely you don't believe these tales of goblins and curses to be true? Not at all. However, I suspect those lads did find something in the barrel. But did it have any connection to failing crops and dying livestock? No. I can assure you there's nothing to fear. Coincidence reigns supreme. So what do you think they found? That is for us to discover, Miss Bateman. Who was the third man who joined my father and Mr. Bryden on the excavation? I'm afraid I don't know. Ah, that's a shame. I'd heard about the excavation and I were intrigued by it. I mostly stayed at home during that time. The atmosphere in the village was rather too tense for me liking. And besides, the excavation were undertaken with an air of mystery about it. Hmm, that's odd. It's also about folklore. Tell me more of this folklore you mention. It is said that Hobbs Barrow is home to a goblin. Everyone in Bewley has some version or another of this story. But the version my father told me as a child described the barrow as a thin place. The goblin were deemed to be the guardian of this so-called thin place. I wonder what the thin place is. Let's ask about the goblin first. Tell me more about this goblin. Some said he were a mischievous little mite, snatching newborn lambs and smashing windows with pebbles. Others said he were friendly, there to lend a helping hand in times of strife. The latter of which makes it all the more surprising as to why the previous excavation took place. My father's stories put the goblin in the mischievous category. Saxnot, he called the creature. I recall one such anecdote, that Saxnot entered Bewley and ordered a pair of boots to be made by the cobbler. Huh. However, when collecting them, he insisted on paying for them with a bag of so's teeth. Whoa. The cobbler was so scared of angering the goblin that he accepted. A colourful tale indeed, Mr. Shoulder. 
Has any explanation been offered for why this sack's not cursed the soil? Your guess is as good as mine, lass. Okay. Let's ask about this thin place. What is a thin place? A place where one can walk between worlds. Where the flesh meets the spirit world. Hmm. Just superstition, of course, as you will know. Alright, let's ask him about this dream then, see if he can give any light on that. I had a peculiar dream last night. I met a creature at Hobbs Barrow. I suppose you might say it was a goblin. It told me it had saved my father from trouble inside Hobbs Barrow. I'll admit the coincidence of this is somewhat astounding. A remarkable coincidence, but nothing more than that. But there is still one thing that puzzles me. The goblin told me proof of its claims would await me in the morning. Surely enough, I awoke to find that my father's journal had appeared in my room. Very queer indeed. Mm. Mr. Shoulder, you invited me here, to a town I'd never heard of, only for me to discover that my own father was here 25 years before. And not only that, but that he was also embroiled in some sort of superstitious hysteria which goes against everything he ever taught me. Something is wrong here. Very wrong. This must be more than mere coincidence. It's strange, I'll give you that. But please remember who you are, Miss Bateman. Alright, let's ask about the journal. This is my father's journal. Incredible. Can I look inside? You may. Look at these drawings. Wonder what it all means. You and I both. It all feels very out of character for my father. I'm sure you'll find the answers beneath the soil, Miss Bateman. What about the stone, then? What do you make of this strange stone? The carving of a cockerel? Yes, it was strapped to my father's journal. Do you think it could have something to do with the previous excavation? Possibly, though I'm not aware of the motif having any meaning around these parts. Is this your glove? I've been looking all over for that. Ah. Where did you find it? In the alley behind the plough and furrow on the night of my arrival. Were you there? As I say, I've been bedbound for several days, Miss Bateman. How odd. Can I please have it? And we also saw yeah. him. Thank you. So. Just gonna sit here. We're bees of the same pod, Miss Bateman. I knew you wouldn't be frightened by a few old stories. It will be interesting to see what those lads found in there. Certainly. Thank you so very much for responding to my letter and for coming here. We have some great discoveries to make, you and I. I sincerely hope so. And the chance to follow in your father's footsteps. Right, time for me to shift these old bones. I'm to take me a spot of the plow and furrow. Oh. I'll be there all night should you need me assistance. Thank right. you, Mr. Shoulder. I'm sorry again for giving you the runaround. I promise I am not beyond redemption. I won't let you down again. See you soon. Looks like he might be around a little bit now. Interesting. I'm starting to wonder if Mr. Shoulder even existed. <laughs> yeah. I was as well, actually. A mystery man revealed. Okay. Uh, let's go to the farm then. We know a little bit about the. The day was starting to test me. The word coincidence felt insufficient to explain what was happening. It was after that first conversation with Leonard's shoulder that I started entertaining thoughts of a truly irrational nature. What if my dream wasn't just a dream? What if it was all more than simple coincidence? What if that thing really could help my father? It's possible. Anyway, did that tick anything off the to-do list? Uh, oh yes, it did a little bit. We still need to find out more about the stories connected to Hobbs Barrow, and we've got to convince Mr. Bryden to allow the excavation. So let's head up to the farm, and um, I mean, Mr. Bryden might know a little, a little bit <clears throat> about the folklore. Okay. Oh. Uh, what's going Take on here? Away from the fire, Thomasina. What are you burning? Nothing. Just waste. Huh. Now go inside. Oh. 
Alright, well I guess we can look at that. Interesting. So, I mean, that that's like, that could be like a, a demon related thing, right? Like an Abraxas thing. That That's my thinking there. Daredevil might know a bit more about that kind of thing. Um, Mr. Bryden is outside his house. Good day, Mr. Bryden. Miss, I... I'll stop you there. I know what you're going to ask. No, I haven't changed my mind. Oh. There'll be no digging here, lass. You Mr. sure? Mr. Bryden, allow me to explain. There has been an astonishing development this morning. Yes? My father was with your brother during the excavation. Oh. Yes. Can you believe it? I had no idea he had been here. The answer's still no, lass. I saw what happened to poor Samuel. I won't risk the same happening to anyone else. But... That's enough now. You can feast your eyes on that hovel to your heart's content, but there'll be no digging. All right, fine. No digging. All right, then, guys. Well, we're out of time anyway, so we'll try and convince him and find out more about these folklore tales in the next one. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, Hobo, Numinous, Coomadin, and Paul Leone. And I'll see you next time.